Well, I guess we didn't even get the crickets. They've all gone to sleep. No crickets. Would y'all, did the winter come wash y'all away, feed you to death? Did you get consumed by the occupier? No crickets. That's what's going to be one day. You won't be available to yourself to defend yourself or anybody else. It'll be silence. Even to the crickets, there will be none of us to have an idiom to refer to. So I like that. I picked that up pretty good. That was a technical difficulty. The crickets would not play today. Boy, I told you this this year might be coming out to be an interesting one. Might be an interesting one. But it means something anyway. Again, like you see the news, it's the notice. It tells you something. It's not really fake. It's what it is. And there's a thing going on. And we can uh, ignore it or we can believe that it's telling us what it is. Uh, I see things in it. I don't know what else, what you all see more than, uh, I mean, just more than, oh, well, there's the news. Oh, well, that's what's going on. Oh, well, that's, that's predictable. All these things that uh, look like they are on the surface, but they really aren't. They really aren't uh, when you get to the point of what's happening, what they could tell you if you looked at it. One of the things I've told you in the past, and uh, uh, it keeps going on and on and on. It's not, it's just, like I said, it's predictable. You can look into the future with this stuff that goes on and see that there's a thing that will, will happen and see that there's frailties in the assertions of, let's say, authorita, the government itself. And there's even frailties in the things that you that you know you look at. It makes no sense. It's really troubling. And then everyone says, "Oh, we there it is. It's no good. But we're not going to do much of anything. Uh, much of anything is the problem. We have to do everything. We were told that we would have to do everything." Again, I did, my mind just goes to Thomas Jefferson. We're a ma an educated mass of people will have to be vigilant against the encroachments and occupations and invasions and intrusions that will come in upon established society. One that really doesn't exist prior to its time, the uh, United States of America. And then I want to focus now closer to the law of the land where people actually could start owning land without servitudes to a so-called sovereign, someone who, by whatever authority, claimed power to dictate to other people. And so there's a line, you got to make a line somewhere for yourself. You can't you can't just say, oh, this is the no good and we can't do anything about it. If it's, something's going down and it's not supposed to be the way you thought, you're going to have to figure out how it got taken down and then go after that, because that needs to be excised and removed. Uh, and I told you there was going to be a race here coming uh, when I started broadcasting. Now fully 10 years I've been broadcasting and Number, couple of different networks now now here on reallibertymedia.com and for those of you that can't hear where you're right now but may pick up this 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 uh, broadcast if you hear the, the file tape podcast podcast passcast where you can find this live is rlmradio.xyz rlmradio.xyz is probably the quickest way but we're on i who i i heart high tune i who i heart i tune and Various other Spreaker, and thank you, uh, Grammy Mary, for what you do there to keep that keep that going. It makes it real easy for us to get onto the uh, internet that way, and then cast this thing out to other places like the YouTube, where a lot of you can pick it up and recast it out again. So, but this is BTW RLM three three zero two BTW RLM three zero two. Before I get that forgotten, but uh, so uh, there's lots uh, a lot of places to find the broadcast. But I've told you that you can look into the future from the uh, and I don't mean the past in his history. I mean the past from the for the machinations of the government, those in power. And we find out, we now see, it's clearly coming out now. Those in power are psychopaths. Those in power is a, a create a cockistocracy. The worst among us rise up. If you don't, if you don't like, and I don't even, not even the politics, just what they they they, they tell to us. This this girl coming out of New York, I think it is. I don't even know her name. She's become the youngest congresswoman. If you don't listen to her and understand the ignorance that's coming in to fill the seats of power in the lawmaking condition, you missed a big trip. We've fallen flat on our face, and this is what's starting to come in. And I told you last week about Generation Z. Those kids coming in behind that, 
boy, oh boy, we may, we messed up. Those of us that had the opportunity, we're it's not, not dead yet, but we're not, I don't see the change, and you can change my mind about this anytime. Boy, oh boy, didn't, did, did we mess up? Yeah, but here we go. We can come and see that authority is actually authorita, and I told you how to address this. And I told you it was going to be a foot race as to whether who would figure out the lie versus the imposition of a national imperative. And the people were the people didn't have a clue. And so the those in the in the seats of decision figured out the national imperative would, if you will, trump everything that you could bring. And I looked at that out of my experience and said, well, the only way you can defeat that is to trump that by showing it's a fraud, by showing that it's a pretext or a pretense, however you want to approach that for the purpose. And we have the evidence of it. I've talked to you all. You can address a lot of this stuff. You can go after it. You can uh, do what you can to, to become the, the, a stick in the spokes, if you would just will. A lot of this is just letters. A lot of this is the world. You complain about it being the administrative world. Well, there's a way to go after that. Once you figure out that is the case, there is a law side, but it's uh, and then there's the equity side, which is the law that doesn't get recognized by authorita uh, and imposes upon your rights that doesn't otherwise have a remedy. That's the equity side. There's those things that sit there, but they've been really overwhelmed by this methodological approach and in invasion in this country. And I'd liken it back. There's a couple of different levels and a couple of different uh, approaches in it, and it depends on what your facts are that you have and that you've studied that you want to go down and you can prove to yourself. I can prove quite a number of, of potentials and probabilities and possibilities. Some are working, and I focus on a couple of them because those are the most dangerous. I looked at what I had to look at, and they were most dangerous. And one of them is the military consequence, and one is this foreign invasion consequence that I keep referencing through the uh, sustainable development part of it. The World Bank, the, the monetary side, the, the sustainable debt, all that's nonsense. These are different. These are different types of invasions. But I think I have an information today that was written by somebody who brings up. She doesn't do it this way, but she brings up. When I mean, you read inside the context of the article, at least for myself, I can see the the evidence for you, not for me. And that's why I can see it. The evidence of how the military works the same as this other foreign invasion. In fact, you'll find that in places they start to overlap. You'll talk, they use the same language between the in, in, military invasion, uh, military imposition on your lives. And it's not, uh, it's not inconsequential. It is what rules the day. It, people don't, may not really appreciate that, may not believe it, may not understand it. They don't understand why they don't have the rights they thought they had because they didn't understand what they were dealing with. They keep coming up with a bunch of stuff, won't listen behind the woodshed uh, to start being the most, uh, get the most basic foundation about how this would work in a military consequence, an occupational consequence notwithstanding what you think is out there, and or a foreign invasion consequence. These are both also treated under international law. And I do that as a nebulous idea for what I told you I read a long time ago in that encyclopedic uh, presentation to us, if you're wanting to read it, or willing, uh, the uh, Benedict's on Admiralty. And uh, then, so that starts to fold, all this stuff starts to fold in my mind when I read stuff. Allow me to look at things and say, listen, we, we are in a bad way, but it's not completely done here. Uh, we're not, we can see, if you will, the dystopian technocr technocracy coming and, and all around us and coming onto us. And I tell you, you're buying, you buy in, you, they, you plug in, this is, uh, the silent weapons of quiet wars. It's all there, folks. The thing is, is how do you uh, not engage it? How do you avoid it? How do you address it? It's so, so overwhelmingly powerful in a way. And it's all done, in my mind, with smoke and mirrors. It's all done with this uh, false front. And I think we did a, I did a Twitter, the spaghetti western that we live in. I've come in and on all these analogies, if you will. They're not inconsequential, and they don't won't not do you they won't do you harm or not do you harm. But but in fact, they really are just false fronts. We talk about them in the context of st stalking horses, and I talk about staking hold, stakeholders. I don't know that anybody's talking like this anywhere. I, I don't know. I don't hear it. And if I think I did, I, we would probably be doing a whole lot better as a people. Because there'd be a better awareness. It wouldn't be just a big whining complaint. It would actually be, oh, there it is. That's what's going on. Let's stop it. And there's a way to do that. So I've offered uh, on this uh, since the uh, our lives since the 9/11. They said the world America changed. I, I, that was a lie. They just changed. They just changed how they were going to treat you. Is all they were going to treat you like they'd been setting you up. And I saw that happening. And so I said, I told you. I, I just said they went and done it. They pulled the trigger on everybody. 
the Patriot Act rolled out real quickly. They they defined all of y'all uh, within the misdemeanor content. If they suspected you of misdemeanor, you were then converted uh, right there by act of law into an enemy combatant, which is really more you now in the military consequence and, and how they would treat you. And then you saw, as I told you about the murder memo that was admitted to in 2010, I think I finally reported on it on 2012 or so, uh, about how they were going to what, go through judicial expedience. I have an article here that I'll talk to in the next the next article I'll talk with that'll the the author goes through and identifies all this to herself and her readers that doesn't really understand how it's connected and it's it's not in the country of the United States. This is a universal military consequence, and so I'll get to that in a second. What I wanted to point out before is how do you address these this uh, national imperative of national security, the domestic uh, uh, security and all this uh, safety and all this nonsense. When you realize it's a pretext, well, you, that's exactly how you deal with it. You, you have, but you have to engage. You can't not do it. And I've told you there was, a, I think, I think I got his name right, Jonathan Corbett, not James Corbett, Jonathan Corbett. I don't know. I haven't talked to him. Don't know anything about him. I saw a website. I've talked about him before. He wanted to go after the TSA. I said, well, he's got a good folk, He's got a good momentum going, but he needs to know some basics. I asked a few of you to maybe contact with him if you're interested to work with him, get together to work together. Uh, maybe take my ideas up and start to apply them. And I've told you here, I think it was last week, again, and I got some more things down the tabs. The tabs are like 60 tabs down already. I'm so far behind every week. Uh, I, I now see people reporting on something I was, things I was going to report to you on months ago. Uh, they're now, it's now coming to the surface for most people, but it was there to see before uh, that I said that people who, you don't like this imposition on your right to travel through the airports, you're going to have to address it, and you're going to have to address it uh, administratively, and the courts came back and said that, and I've pointed all that, how they did that, after I told you that. Uh, Jonathan Corbett was uh, one of the guys that came to bear uh, with, he wanted to fight all this, I said, you might be able to get together with them, if you're not in it, and you don't have anything to risk, you'd be the best people to jump into it, was what I also told you, I said, but you're going to have to address it on the pretense of a national imperative when there isn't one, and the rule that's uh, already admitted when they got the rule that came out and they had to admit, or the court ad admitted, that there were certain limitations upon that authority, then that's where you open up the door. You open that door and you uh, and you go in there and you maintain that narrow path. And I explained all this before. Well, it comes out today, and last week I think I talked about the fact that the uh, TSA agents uh, were not getting paid, and that meant a different way to approach this. That meant that the uh, they were not essential. And I told you that pretense and pretext is going to be the Achilles heel to this whole thing. Well, that non-essentiality is the weakness given, if it's not essential, then what's the imposition, the right of imposition in the minimum? Because the minimum imposition is what they have to put on. And when you go read the proper stuff, you'll see all this. You'll see the words. You won't even take my words. You'll go copy and paste it right out of the objective basis, the black and white, the rule, the policy, or the law, and you'll... Compare them all, and you bring them out, and then you compare them to the actions, and that's how you start to get to what is the minimum they can do, or what they need to do, and, and expose the, the excesses of that. And I told you last week, again, I'll repeat myself again, that I said that the lack of payment to the uh, under the federal shutdown is a window of opportunity to see what is essential and what is not, and the TSA has been found to not be essential. Well, it comes out just breaking onto the under the scene here as I was going to, bro uh, going to air here. Uh, Baltimore Airport forced to close security checkpoint due to CS TSA callouts. Not much of a story here on the text, but massive story there in the cap in the title. Mal Baltimore Washington International Thurgood Marshall Airport was forced to close a security checkpoint Saturday and exercise a contingency plan due to excessive callouts by TSA agents. The big picture. TSA agents and other airport personnel have been working without pay for almost an entire month with the government shutdown now in its 29th day. Lawmakers have speculated that pressure on the U.S. Air, on the U.S. aviation system, if it reaches a point of total dysfunction, could be the breaking point that leads to President Trump and Democrats striking the deal to reopen the government. I can care less about all that, folks. I told you both parties are, are, are treasonous. Uh, they're held, aided and abetted by the by the. The Bar Association, that's not my opinion. Go to the uh, Jefferson Mining District uh, lawsuit in 2013, and you'll see what we did there. They defaulted out. Uh, there's a default judgment against all these people that are causing harm in your life. Uh, they have no uh, authority whatsoever 
Uh, and so the, all that stuff that's going on between the president, uh, the Republican president and the Democrats in the House is, is just a bunch of fodder and, and bread and circuses. For our purposes here, this shows, again, in the big picture, that this is a non-essential service that was shut down, and they had a contingency plan. I hope you picked up on that. The contingency plan is another step back that they were exposing external. They were putting in positions in excess of what they actually had to do, as evidenced right there. Not only was it the standard that was no good that I was telling you about, it is the fact that they had another plan. And the other plan could be used without them. Proving, as I said last week, the angle that you go, if it's an angle, the fact is that they are non-essential to what, even national security. Yet that's a pretense. And since you have to address this fright to travel as an administrative imposition, that's where you go. And I, I would say that the administrative position, imposition is a little bit better because those rules are easier to understand than judicial rules. At least for myself, I found that they delineated how you go about stuff a whole lot clearer than they did through the court system. And so when I'm telling you about these things and I get no response, it's really disheartening a bit. Uh, but like I said last week, I'm, I'm coming to the terms of with that. I think I'm coming to terms with the fact we're going we're gonna to drop the ball. Uh, it's going to be Generation Z that has to pick up and make and clean up if they can, because there's not going to be anybody. I'm not going to be around for them. I'm done. I'll be gone. Lots of you will be gone. There's no example. There's not even a good thought to convey, because we'll be gone. And they're going to have to pick up the piece if they can. So here we have it. Uh, I proved it. Last, I told you last week. I've been telling you about the pretense. I've been talking to you about how you address these things. And this is the same method all. You think this is only for TSA and national security. This is the worst one you could attack, actually. This is the best experience you could get is to go after the worst case. You get strong by fighting this one, and you know it's not a fight. It's really pointing out the excesses. That's the other thing you have to understand. It's not really a fight. This is just a bunch of criminals getting away with crime. And we have the news. The notice to you that this is a big pretense and it doesn't need to be done. They have a contingency plan. That was supposed to be the minimum. And I forgot to mention something, I think, last week. I was talking in the context of what was going on in them searching people. Remember, the we had two, week, two or three weeks before that, we had read the article that the rule was that they were not supposed to be putting any of this on so-called U.S. citizens. That brings up a whole other thing is, well, how'd you... Con How'd you deem me to be presumed to be something other than someone you're not supposed to be causing to do all this? And I, I'm still addressing only the fact that the the minimum imposition is what's supposed to be put on to fulfill the object. Well, if you're not presumed uh, a terrorist and you're not supposed to have the law and you're not a terrorist and there's no evidence that you are, then what is the, isn't every imposition in excess? Today we hear that they can actually shut down a security checkpoint. There's a contingency plan. We don't need the TSA. I don't know what they're doing for the contingency plan. That's not my point on this on this issue. I'm saying that there's a fallback position, and they continue to have fallback positions. And you're gonna you should be in there researching in any any jurisdiction, in any authority, any subject matter, any agency, what their fallback position is, what their condition, the minimum imposition that they could do, because and that's where it starts if they can show they have to. And I'm telling you to argue the pretense, and that means they don't have the right. Again, the spaghetti western, they tell you it's, they tell you it changed, but it didn't really change. You can believe it changed, you can buy into the change, but it didn't. They're going to impose that it has, and you can sit there like the stinking crickets that we found out the real cause of the angelic sound of the crickets is last week. Or you can stand up and do what you're supposed to do, take responsibility for not being abused by these people, not walking with the ring in your nose, not agreeing with your abuser. What is that, the Stockholm Syndrome? There's an actual Stockholm sy a real syndrome about this. Uh, you can point out how people will aid their, abu their abusers. I said last week, this society is just a bunch of ch abused children. I think, I, think I, I Twittered that out. So here it is, folks. If you did, I'm trying to show you how you put the stuff together. I know it comes over weeks, and I only get two hours, and I got to go through a ton. I go through a ton of tabs uh, just to explain. I'm just finding, looking for something to in, in, inspire somebody in a subject matter that they get interested in, and do something, just something. Uh, the evidence is it's not going to happen, but I'm, I'm maybe too stubborn. Maybe I'm too hard-headed. Maybe I'm just not. I'm too dead. Maybe I'm just not smart enough here. I was not intelligent. I'm not smart because I'm not wired, but I'm not intelligent. Maybe it's just uh, the, uh, I'm a fool. And I told you, the only thing that keeps me, shows me I'm not, because a few of us that are doing this along these paths, we do have cause, uh, we do cause a, a change. We do cause an adjustment. It takes time. 
But I think that's just the, the numbers of people. If more people had the awareness, not just to complain about what should happen, but say, no, this is going to happen, and you didn't have the right to violate these provisions that we had, this black and white guidance that we had, and you know, I'm speaking to things like constitutions. Then we maybe we might be getting a little bit farther along. So, non-essential, TSA's non-essential proven. They got a contingency plan. They were doing something else. Everyone got on the planes. Now, my problem with this thought is, this is, I told you, years and years ago, and it came to this condition, the people that are pulling the levers behind the curtain may actually use this opportunity to cause a disaster. Another, if you call it false flag or whatever you want to call it, they will now say because of this, they... And I'm, and I'm hoping that, that, that my words fall dead right here because I don't want to see it. But it's a technique and a tactic. I said this a long time ago. I said, once you now that they got us here, now you got to be careful of the ramifications for trying to get it corrected. And so we'll see. I hope not. But this proves to you it's not essential. They have a contingency plan. What they're putting on you is not the minimum they can get away with. And that's what the guidance is. And none of you have stepped up to say that. None of you have, and then wrestled with the fact that they're going to be the, the, the worm that's going to try and screw, the, the rat the, that's going to fight you all the way, the, the snake that's going to try and slither away into the grass to try and uh, continue their, their, their threat and their scariness uh, in, in what they can do to you. You think a rat can't do to you, watch the fleas that are on that rat. You know, the world's pretty parasitic. So be careful on the critters that you're out there that these people turn into. They have their, they have their ways. And we, our objective was to stop it. And you can't let them crawl back into their native habitat. And we were supposed to keep this stuff contained. And so that takes more than just whining. It takes more than just complaining. So we have, we have here the fact of the non-essential nature of it and that they did have a contingency plan. And I'll bet it's a lot less. I think the whole thing's been a pretense. So we'll find out ultimately that the DHS, all the stuff they've done since 9-11, all this national security stuff, all the, in, all the surveillance thing they put in, that was all under the pretense. It's the same answer. It's the same thing. And so moving on to this pretense, and they needed now to watch out everywhere. An article comes up written by, what was her name? Oh, Susie Dawson. She's uh, exiled from, I think, New Zealand. Uh, she's a political political exile as a journalist. This is what they're doing to journalism as well. If they don't own you as a journalist, uh, the governments, in this new uh, this worldwide war, militarization uh, control grid, a global network, they'll call it here, and you'll see this in all the documents. This this article here will explain in her her findings in New Zealand. Now, she's she's saying that she's you know that she's been writing for for years on this thing. It's all the same, folks. It's a global military control control grid. In fact, she talks about things that when you look when you've heard me talk talk to you over a decade now, you hear you can see through what the, what. Is, is just in documentation form what I've been telling you was in reality. And it has nothing to do with what you see, uh, what you see as the props. And 9-11 was a prop in order to get everybody to buy in. In fact, I looked at some of the things about the TSA, the Twitter that went from t- t- TSA over this Baltimore thing, and everybody's in support of the TSA agents. I told you, folks, the society is an abused child. They don't even know how to look at what they're looking at. And I don't know what to do with about it, except come here and tell you that. And I hope one of you is maybe more more intelligent than me to figure out how do we get at these people that are like this. And it may not, it may be an impossibility. We may be too stunted in our development. I don't know. I really don't know. I don't. It's, I'm not the guy to figure that out. I guess. But I can tell you how to look at look at all this to figure out how you do address the tyranny that we see, and not just as a statement and a winding. There's a tyranny. It's fine. It has a method, and you'll hear it again in this article. There's a method they set out, and it's consistent with everything else I've said as we go through some of this. I won't read the whole article. It's actually a very fascinating article. It ends up bringing up the fact that she was targeted, and that's partly why she was exiled, and how the government, the, the, the psychopaths inside the government, adjust things in order to stay in power. And there's no mass awareness, in other words, in order to figure and check it. Now, the other problem is with the New Zealand and, and, the, and Australia and Canada and, and the British, British uh, and, and the UK, you know, that's, a, that's a, a monarchy, an extension monarchy, right? Democracy, monarchal, monarchal, uh, monarchal, uh, uh, democracy. There's a governor, there's a, a queen's governor that comes in, uh, the governor general that comes in and, and makes sure that everything's to, to, to plan. 
So this is not an extension outside of the same realm. Now you know the connection between the United States and, the, and, the, and Britain. And remember, I keep telling you there were some connections before the Constitution that went through the Constitution. Article 6, it said the prior engagements and debt shall be law of the land. That's, that's your law of the land. And so there's a long-standing problem with this connecting, uh, this reserve, reservation of right. And it ties back to the Netherlands. And it ties back to the, what you get back into the international order. And I mention it, I talk about it, you all can go not research it or research it. It's up to you. I don't know what, to, what makes it important to you to see the cohesiveness of this structure and that we have something to address. It's not just an, uh, it's just not an opinion. It's just not a fantasy or paranoia or anything. It's, it sits there to control every aspect of what's going on. It, it's literally killing you folks. Now, I can't address all of it. I can just tell you it's out there to address. Like we do, I do what I can. And we're running up against some pretty, pretty formidable problems in the fact that the system is pretty wired generally to, to distract or derail what, what is a, uh, what is accountability. And that, I think, again, is answered by numbers. As you see, the French people are showing, I think that they're being overtaken some a bit. I think that they're being mis, they're just misguided either in their own intention or someone's grabbed the handles and starting to, again, adjust that but you see the military onslaught on that that mass resistance and I've told you to be careful that way because that's already been in the books to be planned for and this article talks about that as well exclusive the spy with their little eye five eyes a part of what NSA calls internal internally its global network have their dirty fingerprints all over the latest spying scandal engulfing New Zealand writes exiled Kiwi journalist and activist Susie Dawson. Now, I'm not going to read you for all that, and there's too much to read here. Quite an article. I'll read you some highlights. I want to put together some points for you. That within her research and finding, you'll see what I've been saying, and now this expands if I want to help, uh, this can help us to see what I've been saying, but from another perspective, that well, the oppression and tyranny and militarization of control that we're under is global. And she found it a whole different way, went her, her way, but in the, in the explanation, we'll go through the explanation a bit. I'm only going to read some certain passages here, and we'll, I'll, I'll then touch back and show you how what I've said before touches right in the, the show that this has been going on uh, for a long time, and certainly longer than, than her, um, her, her reporting window, which it looks like starts to go back from 2014. You know, I've been talking about this stuff for many, many, many years. And I was writing about it back in the late 90s, and I was finding it out in the middle 90s. So this is a, that's my lineage, not to be well, first, first before, but I'm telling you there's a long line of study that can be had to show that this stuff is bef way before what's being found today. And we all should have known this, and we all should have had this in us when we uh, saw, we, we see, had all this stuff in us when we saw 9-11, because it was all out there before 9-11. We may not have been so receptive to what was going on. She writes, in the wake of a bombshell release of the State Services Commission report into the affair of, of, of a Russell Norman, Norman wrote, quote, my key takeaway is that under the previous government, no one was safe from being spied on if they disagreed with government policy. And so that's almost a given in this militarized condition. I think it's just you just think that we're, we're going down Google's just peering in on you. No, they're a government con military contractor. Uh, the, uh, this peering has been going on for a long time. The, the plans for how they're going to keep track of this has been going on for a lot longer than you think. The things I talk about today that we're fighting today have all the, the, um, the so-called legal authority been put in statutes in this country, the United States of America, back in the 80s that they now build on. The principles of the police imperative, the, the national imperative, the domestic security imperative, were set long, long, long time ago. I think Lincoln really perfected that pretty well. And so you hear me refer periodically to that. Why Libra Code still becomes relevant, and it's international law as well. So you keep coming around, you keep reading about this. Maybe just being found out by people over many years of research. But the, it was all in the books if you read it before that. It was all sitting there to tell you if you knew if you had the eyes to see. And if you have the ears to hear, and you're listening, and you're, you know what I'm saying, and you know right where to go to find it, and you know that you've got something to do. And if you don't have the ears to hear, 
you think I'm just uh, maybe talking about interesting things, but you're not going to be motivated to work out how to make this thing stop. As I think I was told in this chat, the RLM chat last week, I, I'm cryptic. Okay, I guess I was, as I responded, that's my cryptocurrency. And I apologize for it being cryptic if it is, but that, that just means maybe there's more study to do in the subject matters. What I would say is the way I'm telling you to look, Don't not because I say, but because you'll find your fastest track is what I'm showing you or explaining. And if, again, as I ask, if I'm not explaining it so right, so correctly or clearly enough, uh, send me an email mark at uh, markonthebeast at protonmail.com and I'll I'll see what I can do to straighten a bit up and guide you again on a, on something that interests you. And again, if I'm talking to you and it doesn't interest you, it, it really it doesn't matter. It really doesn't. I'm just one it, literally one ear and out the other. You, you're not you tune it out. You go do something else, and that that's it. So there's all kinds of target rich environment. I keep telling you we're in a military consequence. I use that analogy because it is target rich. If you're going to go out there and try and take this thing down, you could do it. You could do it pretty quickly, I think, as a mass. So you can. So she continues to write, at its core, this scandal, and again, this is the Five Eyes Global Network that they talk about that was exposed that no one that comes against the government would be would be uh, free of, of, of scrutiny. And it starts to have to build your your calculations on how then you do address this. And it's uh, because I do this, uh, because I use that as a calculation, it allows us to address things like uh, the imposition of the term sovereign citizen and to address that in ways that show that the government is actually the sovereign the sovereign citizen, that actually the term is used to mischaracterize and interfere with property rights and or other rights and to defame someone and to evade the duties that are imposed upon those that have asserted that to destroy a thing that the government has no right to destroy. And I'm talking to pit, pit, particularly in the property rights and then than utilizing the instrumentalities of the government in order to work that through. And those people start to see, or they're wired to see, or whatever, they're told to watch out for anybody who tries to bring a remedy. And you need to be able to know that. And when you put yourself out there, they're going to come and, they're going to come and attack you. And they come in all funny ways, or really odd ways. And they're not, not legitimate, but they come anyway. They make the distraction, they put it on paper, they make you have it respond, and you have to have the, really the right answer to all this. And it's a slow trawling of, of all the the uh, parasites that sit in the government to stop you. And they're not supposed to be there to stop you. They're supposed to be out of your way. And that's the first violation. So she writes, at its core, the scandal is a reflection of fundamental flaws in the fabric, very fabric of the intelligence gathering practices in New Zealand, its infrastructure and network, where the collected data flows, whom the collection of that data serves, and to which masters our intelligence services ultimately answer. Uh, that's a her her subjective view. I, I would say that, that what looks to be a flaw is a plan. It, it's part of the structure, and so we got to be very careful on what we come we come in this article as I'm reading uh, to you here. Be very careful on what what uh, uh, conclusions we might come to any of this as well. Always the categories of possibilities and probabilities leave open every aspect, and don't choose any until there's clearly evidence to to put down a more affirmative belief of what's going on until you can focus in on a couple and then bring yourself to the conviction, the un, uh, the un, un, unassailed conviction that that's what's actually going on. And that, that requires a, the, the ultimate research and, and evidence and having it in your mind and having it in, in documents, that on a partic moving on a particular subject matter. She continues to write, firstly, where is the data... That, that is being collected by, by these spies really going? Secondly, who is directing New Zealand's human intelligence assets and apparatus and foreign intelligence operations? And thirdly, what is the impact for the Kiwis who unwittingly cross paths with our spy agencies in a country where the legal definition of threat to national security has been removed? So she makes a critical observation at the very last sentence. Uh, they take away the objective definitions. And they do the what with them? They stick them into a bureau rat to make that decision. And you'll see that in this article. And where have I said that before to you? I said this when I told you about the murder memo and what the uh, evidence of that was relative to executive power. 
first thing that she re- references is something called IC Watch. IC Watch in New Zealand. This gentleman named M.C. McGrath founded something they called the Transparency Toolkit. IC Watch initiative was using open source data to expose specific players, contracts, and commercial relationships in the global intelligence community. Again, openly given information, openly available given information, volunteered information, volunteerism, uh, that was used to put together things that would give information to people who who decided to to, to focus in on any one of you if they might have right now we're at the we're at the big players right now but you're going to see as she finds out in this article they're coming they've been coming after you but only in the context when it becomes relevant to them in other words the journalists that can expose this are probably the most relevant at this point and you're watching them being taken down anybody who has any major control of databases uh, and storage is going to be attacked. I think that's the Kim.com issue also in New Zealand, if you don't make these connections as well. So she continues to write, uh, to my knowledge, her, this is Susie Dawson, no, no member of the New Zealand media has ever thought to per- peruse the UC Watch database to examine the extent of New Zealand's involvement in the integrated global network, global network, as an NSA so eloquently calls it, or more appropriately, the qu- the quote, the total force referenced by ex-secretary of defense Donald Rumsfeld who when in he when, when he re- redefined the term at a key moment post 9/11 so now we bring in the pentagon the, the civil the pentagon the defense uh, secretary of defense uh, Donald Rumsfeld now we tie this back to the United States her title answered one of her points to be found uh, that she was going to be looking for the answer is already right here. It's also tying to your NSA. And so we have the, the, the loop already formed in this article. As I'm, again, not, not reading the entire article going through to try and show you that this thing, this, this uh, well, this total force, the global network, total domination thing, it was no joke. But it wasn't written, it wasn't just written here just in the last 10 years. The total force wasn't just used to encapsulate these civilian contractors, but also to indemnify them from prosecution or civil liability. Now we start finding this method of wha- how these people have figured out what to do and how to do it to, if it's, as she says here, encapsulate, protect, bring immunity. Doesn't that sound no different than what the industry, government did in industry versus relative to vaccines? They just did it more uh, overtly uh, in an open law to do so. The American adoption of large numbers of private contractors into their military has helped to stretch their tentacles deep into the South Pacific. Well, military contracts, public-private partnerships, folks. This is just fascism, right on its face. This is what being brought in in public-private partnerships through the alternative uh, dispute resolution system, consensus. That's the other side that we talked about. That's what we sued. Right? This is no different. They're talking the same thing, but it's public-private partnerships. She doesn't say it here. This is the system that you've been living under. It's a fascist system. You don't, I mean, I don't, no, no, don't have to deal with, I don't care what anybody else's definition, the definition that they used in the 40s when the stuff was starting to be put together is the definition you use, and it's the combined use of government and corporations to do the bidding of government. They appear to be government because they're protected by the government. Why? Because they got the force, they got the power. They'll hurt you. And so this is, again, she's opening up this connection from New Zealand to America, it's all the same system. She's broadening out to South Pacific, and she just mentions they're using private contractors, military contractors. How do you know someone is or is not a military contractor, folks? And you're in the spaghetti western that you live, like I've told you. How do you know that the bar association's not a, and it's a foreign association they domesticated? How do you know that's not a military contractor? You, when you read Libra Code, you couldn't know. It'll tell you. You're not supposed to know. There, in fact, it'd be treason uh, from their side in order for an officer to divulge that to you. And so, when we go back to where in the Libra Code? Back to the number one, the, the, the article number one in that Libra Code. You know them when you see them, folks. you got to look very carefully. So, she's uh, identifying these things in this article relative to a problem that she's had in New Zealand. And I'm saying she's tying together the whole thing that I've been telling you about that's been there for us to see uh, for uh, for as long as I've been broadcasting or, or writing for 20, and a half, 20 years before that, or twenty years of, uh, 10 years before that. 
Uh, she goes to the right. A section of my piece, Susie Dawson's piece, in 2016, remember, get the timetable here. You were on notice here in Behind the Woodshed 2012 and 2014 of articles of documentation and evidence of the very things that she's pulling together for herself in, in New Zealand today. Uh, on her, in 2016, she's pulling together this piece called Understanding World War III, reported on an official Pentagon strategic planning video released by The Intercept. And now my one problem I'll tell you is that this is also a bunch of people that are supposedly media that are also, I think, part of it. I don't know if Susie Dawson's part of it or not, but she refers to enough people inside the surveillance system where I came up with the idea that for myself that maybe uh, we were dealing with Snow Job Snowden, not really what's up. We're dealing with maybe a false front of that, too. She's referencing, self-referencing things that are in that system as well. However, they, to me, that would be noticed to us more than a divulging of a secret, if you will, that was not known to us. So this, she says this video was released by the, released by the Intercept, which revealed that the U.S. Army considers the urban landscape of the world's major cities to be ground zero combat zones of the future. This contextualizes, this contextualizes the militarization of police, including in New Zealand, who have been supplied with military-grade weapons and training. As a summary, as summarized in the piece, Susie Dawson's piece of 2016, there is now evidence that stormtrooper-like riot police serving as a domestic army is in fact in alignment with the strategic plans of the Department of Defense. This video invokes military counterinsurgency doctrine, quote, honed in the cities of Iraq and the mountains of Afghanistan. Now, I read all that, and I said, haven't I reported? I don't even remember. For all this stuff is so just water under the bridge for me. It's just information. I think I've reported about this. I think it was the United States military's document that talked about megacities and the urbanization of warfare for urban urban areas. And I re if I remember right, that document referred to a UN document that was written in 2014. It's always sitting there as she's finding out today about this stuff, about turning inward. I said, but that's just them now focusing inward on the plan that was already there that they had done. Don't forget, they had done that in Lincoln's time. And don't, please don't forget, I hope you, you got that broadcast where I read the proclamation was supposed to, that was supposed to end the period of the, of the Civil War. I think it was Andrew Johnson, maybe, that it did not. It, in fact, enveloped Texas, didn't it? It said, we're going to have more people here. But they pl they promised to go down and become sub sub uh, invaded by the federal authority. So, back to this. The, the Department of Defense this is a complete condition uh, that uh, we would have uh, the riot police or military. Consider that in what happened in, Fa in uh, France. Let's jump right over, because this article rever refers to France as well. Uh, what did they do? Immediately brought out the so-called uh, military police. The national police. And there is no national police in the United States, but they want to call you that it is. So it's these subverted systems. And when you take federal funds, you're going to be part of the federal system is the other thing. Don't forget about the follow the money aspect. It's not just who you go after to find out who may have done the dirty deed. It's you find out who the allegiances are. And there's laws in the states, if you look, when you take federal funds, you will be you have to follow the grant, uh, the grant uh, uh, method, the grant rules, the grant policies, the laws that that grant was written from. The article here goes on to say, in the video, the U.S. Army repeatedly refers to images and material militarized riot police as our soldiers. Now, I remember distinctly, don't remember which article it was, what broadcast, you're not going to be able to see, I'm not going to be able to tell it to you. I remember telling you about this years and years and years ago. I said, here's the admission. If you, do, if you didn't think your local police were militarized soldiers, here it is. She finds the same thing through this video. You can pick it all up when you get this link, if you haven't already found it. And she so, shows a dialogue that was within the, within the video and talks about the Oz-like voice says, our soldiers will have to operate within these ecosystems with minimal disruption and flow. Riot police, our soldiers, let that sink in. Okay, let that sink in. That's what I've been telling you. That's what I said. Let that sink in. Think about what they're saying here. Take this literally, what's going on. This article points this out as well. You see, this article is a summarization of things, not just on what I was talking about, on hers, but you can see within this article, 
summarization of what I've been telling you for years is in the documents that a researcher has found and in videos that are produced for your notice to tell you what's going on. And I think the mega cities document that I referred to that I reported here explained a little bit about that. But that was from prior. That was just the culmination of the prior uh, projects. And then as I think about that, this is where this is where uh, someone like Alex Jones would have been beneficial to all of you all to listen not to the the sensationalism rhetoric, but the documentation that was showing this was going on and understanding those things. Then what he didn't do and he doesn't do, then applying it. So we're, she's starting to apply it here. And so your mind, if you've listened to Alex Jones and all those programs, of Black, the, the, the Iron Mountain Project, all this, even Silent Weapons of Quiet Wars, all these projects, all these uh, things, uh, operations, you start, re, start putting these now in practice. You'll hear these ringing true here. Not the sensationalism about it, but that they're actually functioning. And then you, when you have to do the analysis, that realizing what that does where you live, and how you live, and how you might address some of these things is what I've been trying to get you to start, look how to start looking at this. Not just that this is going on, how are we going to stop it? Because if you realize what's going on, there's a takeover that has happened, and we've never really actually lived in the so-called freedom that the people think that they've lived. And that's why I've told you the word freedom actually means a range, a, a frame of constraint within a range of motion is allowed. It's like a physics definition. It's not. It's, it's it's not freedom like you think. Freedom is a, a free domain. It's not a free place. It's a domain. It's a place. It's a specific specific thing that has some specific rule and regulation upon it, and someone to enforce that frame. And so, getting back to this, the riot police are our soldiers. I've told you before, a long time ago. Don't run into the streets. So, not in the United States. You saw what happens in France, but they're, they're, they're wired a little different there, so it's going to cause some, it, it, invi it invites more support, but I tell you be careful because that will be subverted, and I think that's starting to happen in France. But don't go out in the streets because this is what's happening. Better to turn inside, understand the mechanisms, learn the, learn the formality of it, and turn inside, and don't, you're invisible to the system while you work, out, work after stopping it. The video states that the Department of Defense must redefine doctrine and the force, in radically new and different ways, the future army will confront a highly sophisticated urban set centric threat. No, they don't define that, but they, the military can't handle you running around in a proper way necessarily. I mean, they can identify you and then stop you, but if you're doing it properly, the way I've been asking you all to, you don't put yourself in jeopardy, and you don't give them, so, give you, them a reason. You are always pushing what the law is, and that works even against them. That's why I tell you, stay in the black and white. Again, they can be ultimate criminals, and you'll never see you'll never see a, a remedy for that. But if short of that, like I've told you before, I've kind of made the comment: you got these people up the forest, the law enforcement sitting up in the forest. A miner goes up, they say, "You can't come in here. We got to we're closing this this road to fire." The miner presents this document that's the black and white one simple sentence that says. These these orders that you're live that you're working from cannot stop me. They they're not the authority for the orders does not extend to stop me, and they have to pass. That's what I'm telling you to start looking for. It's for the most part a lot of this stuff is there, and you just have to go find it. Stop thinking about what you think it is. Start understanding that what's in this article here is telling you in summary the the, the framework and structure you live under. And then start thinking, well, how am I going to move through that? The interconnectedness, talk about inclusion now, right? Put, 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 stop your, 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 your social justice warrior nonsense as a cover for the, to cover your, that this is the, what they're talking about. The interconnectedness is an inclusion. There's no escape from this stuff. If there's an escape in this regard for military international, it happens to be through that little door I told you called neutrality. And you better be able to prove that you're in that, in that status. The interconnectedness of U.S. law enforcement, not just NSA here, but all of law enforcement authorities with those of international partners, is further evidenced in yet another IC Watch entry. A, quote, lead business architect for the, quote, analytical 
Framework Program, AFP, for the, quote, Office of Intelligence and Investigative Liaison, goes into detail about an application he developed in conjunction with the U.S. Five Eyes partners, Canada, the United Kingdom, Australia, and New Zealand. The express purpose was to address the, quote, military multi-year challenge of sharing personally identifiable information, PII, with heads of intelligence. Hint, H-I-N-T. They really shouldn't pronounce that as a word. It's H-I-N-T. It means heads of intelligence. It isn't a word. So we did with the NSA and NASA. We did that with Patriot. It's not Patriot. It's a bunch of words. It means actually something. If you look inside, it's a lie on the cover that, that covers another lie. So we have these papers that are out there that you can find that would tell you how this all works. I want to go back. I forgot to tell you the toolkit. Maybe I didn't. I'm forgetting already. That toolkit is the same kind of a toolkit developed I told you you'll find at the World Bank. And the World Bank is, uh, or the IMF, and the IMF, and then the Federal Reserve is behind that. The toolkits is what they develop for development of this thing in the world. And so this toolkit that we here discussed in the beginning of this article has the same methodology, has the same form as what you'd find at the World Bank websites, if they still have those listed, for their toolkits. How to destroy and control and distract and contain and, and ultimately run your life to their profit. And I've told you they can get on both, all kinds of sides for that. So anyway, so they've, the toolkit here was, in, I forgot to point that out. This is a the word toolkit, you'll find at World Bank if you look around. I think they still have them. And they'll tell you exactly, if you want to take down a country, they'll tell you exactly how to do it in every one of those toolkits. On a specific, topical, a subject matter specific topic. And so you have to read quite a few topics if you want to take down the government generally, but maybe someone knows that. I never got into combining all that, but they just use these toolkits. If you're focused on taking out the economy or the transportation or the, or the education system or the local governments or what, whatever the water system, they have a toolkit to dismantle what's existing in uh, in a way that no one notices. And you read some of those, and you start seeing those effects. This is how I guess I do it, and I forget to tell you all. When you do that, you see that list of things is being run in your county. You'll see it happening. And so you know exactly. You know them when you see them, folks. If you don't know that that's what they're doing, you sit there thinking that this is all, well, I may not like it, but that's, they have the authority, or I don't even like that authority, but I'm helpless. Well, if you identify it's a methodology, now that's that's a plan. And if the plan doesn't have an actual authority and it comes against one of your rights, properties, remedies, interests, or whatever's in that list, that's a felony. You get these people for, for crime right up front. So the article goes on to say, he makes specific, after talking about the integration, uh, of the global integration to federal law enforcement, he makes specific reference to having utilized, quote, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, FBI Law Enforcement Online, LEO, web portal. How many times I heard monitors talk about the law, so-called law enforcement officers in the public lands as LEOs. It's all tied together, folks. They're all criminals. They all look like law enforcement, but they're all criminals. The existence of web portals where, where intelligence agencies across the global network can both request and receive information is further illustrated in the Snowden doc documents. The NSA has what it calls an information needs portal where its customers, so now you have the government, you have its private partners, and you have their customers, quote, or parenthetically, which range from law enforcement agencies to foreign intelligence agencies to U.S. government departments, and even the United States Federal Reserve, which is not a United States government body, can submit information needs requests. Now, I'm not going to go into this statement about not a U.S. government body. You can go find the act of Congress that created it, and you'll have to see in that act of Congress that didn't happen in the middle of the night when no one was around, but it happened right before Christmas inside session of the Congress, I think it was on the 21st of December in the year that it was passed, like 1913. It was done right up in open Congress. And it'll tell you in that document what all this is. And I can't remember what it all is. It's water under the bridge for me. I just know it's there. It's not. It's one of the things I hold out that you have to discuss, but it's not necessarily, except for utilizing the product of that institution, it's not relevant. 
for the most of the things that I do. In fact, we make sure that we don't touch that rail. And that's what kills it a lot of time. Because when you touch the substance of the product of that, that it does have attached servitudes. Now, what am I talking about? You touch in the system of anything that has to do with that fiat currency or systems that work with the fiat currency or the derivatives. And so, we can see really quickly what the line is if we know where to look for it. But the US Federal Reserve is involved in this as well as I just told you. The World Bank is now tied with their toolkits directly. There's really no distinction in my mind anymore, except for you follow the specific subject matter of the military uh, military purpose relative to whether it's domestic and or international, because you have to approach those two things slightly different, and you have different things to apply. Or it's just a foreign invading force, like the Bar Association or the UN Sustainable Development Principles, or even just general principles that are foisted on people like their laws. And uh, the policy of climate change comes to one, as I talked to you last week about, without getting into that. So we see the interconnectedness of this thing is all tied in through a big fiscal structure, a big uh, monetary structure, a big uh, commerce structure, all done through fascism and international fascism. It's all sitting here to be looked at in this document. There's a whole lot more. I'm just scrolling through. Just want to touch some, some basic pro, um, elements here that do what? Speak to what I've told you in the past, a long time ago, what the condition is. She's coming to it, writing about it now, to her credit. Regardless of what her sources are and my feeling about those sources, the passages I'm highlighting to you here, and there's others, but the ones that I can get to on this broadcast, explain to us this militarized global network that's been under, under, unra uh, that's been working for a long, long time. And we finally get to hear in the article a number, that's this statement number three, uh, her, she's entitled uh, the, the three points of her article she wanted to point out about you know, the, the, the third one saying preying on the citizenry and making a profit and I've told you the government sits in a position it doesn't matter which way you engage it it can take you and it'll win either way whether you think you win or whether you are going to be servient, servient to it in some way uh, fees, fines, taxes, punishments, penalties what your civil rights folks remember that one 42 USC 1981 Right right here, you're just a beast of burden. And these people that are in there, you know that in, a way, in the way they act, and they continue to abuse you, and you continue to allow it. Uh, the object, as she finds, is preying on the citizenry and uh, making a profit. Now, I go loose on the word citizen. Don't trigger all you people to hear the word citizen. Forget that. We're looking at a concept here. I've told you if you want to get rid of the word concept, the, the, I, you're presumed to be subject, whatever that word is, one way is to say citizen. Uh, the other thing is what do you do when you're confronted to tell them that you're not is the more important thing. Not to say I'm not a citizen is to show how that can't be a, that definition cannot be applied. And then what do they do? They obscure that definition like they do for what becomes national security imperatives. And then they do that. They let the, well, they do what? They allow the executive bureaucrat make the decision. No law. And she'll come to that here on how they prey on the citizenry. And it's not P-R-A-Y. Although this is somewhat of a religion. The, uh, there is no doubt that the U.S., in fact, if you go down one track, it is a religion. But neither here nor there when you tie in the holy sea and holy smoke with the climate change and all that stuff. Remember back in 2014 we talked about all that? 2015? Uh, anyway, there is no doubt you're preying on the citizen, uh, the faithful. There is no doubt that the United States influence on NZ, New Zealand intelligence sharing policy, was greatly enhanced by the ascendance of John Key to the office of Prime Minister in 2008. An IC watch entry indicates the U.S. was directly involved in drafting enhanced information sharing policy for our spy agencies. What have I said about the use of the word enhanced in the context of sustainable development, UN policies, policies in general, the implementation of all this stuff, the modernization laws, enhancement laws, they're all this thing, folks. It's just a big military condition. And you, you, you got to understand that, and, and, you, and it may hopefully explain why, when you look out, things aren't running like it should. And I have to tell you, stop your expectations to see... You don't stop your expectation to be living under an objective basis that contains the, the government, but you're working with a bunch of invaders who don't care. You have to deal with that. So she goes on to say civilians, and I always have a problem with this word civilians. In one context, civilian means attorney. 
On another, it means that you're looking, she speaks from a military consequence here by using the word civilians. And it may be proper within context of this article. I didn't look for that. The point is the use of it says you're in a military perspective. Civili or, or, or a legal system. The, the, the civilians are the ones that have the right. It's like talking about the whole people. The whole people are not you, not all the bunch of you. No, it's the legislators in the legislature. Le legislature. That's the whole people. Remember, you're a representative of government. You don't matter. Only a representative has a voice. It's like electoral college, which is, in this case, the way they have it, a protection against the another style of invasion. So she writes, civilians are uh, kept being kept up in the ever-expanding dragnet of the, quote, global network, the logical outcome of mixing a perpetual growth model with surveillance industry. He's just describing what we're living through at this point as we buy in to silent weapons for quiet wars. And it's an expanding uh, business. And this is what I keep telling you. Be careful. You may think you're not doing anything. Someone will make it like you're doing something. And then they start removing the definitions and leave a bureau rat to decide. Now what are you going to do? And if you don't see this coming, there, I don't think there's anybody that can actually do much to protect against it. But at any rate, it's a, that's an is an opinion. Maybe maybe you're a superman or a superwoman. I, I don't know. In 2016, again, remember, reference her time schedule here. She's referencing a law here from 2013. But remember that the, the executive expedience came out in the murder memo of 2010. So she's just even outside of her purview here. Granted, it was in the United States they did that. But, in fact, she's referencing a, a, a time three or four years later. The, in 2016, the New Zealand government began desperately trying to pass, and eventually did, urgent legislation to further enable it to revoke the citizenships of, you guessed it, threats to national security. Simultaneously, they were proposing to redefine the legal term of what the term, quote, threat to national security even meant, and were eventually successful. What have I told you? This amoeba, this parasitic amoeba, does what it needs to adjust itself to get around whatever it needs to, to continually to prey upon you and feed upon you. It's beyond me to understand how, but this is global. Global, folks. It's almost beyond, it's like trying to think about what a trillion is to me. But it's here. It's right here. You can see it. You can see people involved in, invested in, doing it, and actually and then hurting people. And that's really the, the thing where it starts to tear for me. It's hurting people, folks. Whether it hurts you or not, I, I don't know. You know. This doesn't hurt me. Uh, I'm hurt in a different way, but it's through the methods I see being implemented, as I, as I tell you, that we are addressing as best we can. And I ask you to step up for, in that regard. But we're, we all need to be, I think we all need to be uh, throwing our shoulder to that wheel and, or that cut part of the cart and shove it back up on the road and get it better rolling down to where, where it's supposed to do, not how someone has invaded and yanked it and stolen it, hijacked it. Simultaneously, we were proposing, uh, they were proposing to redefine a legal definition, as I've been telling you they do. This is the technique. As I told you, when I found a loophole in traffic t citations, I found out that the cops wouldn't bring a court case. They, into, they wouldn't cite you into court till 30 days. And the law said it in two weeks. It was stale, if you will. They set aside it. You could set aside a citation for not bringing you before the court on traffic ticket in two weeks. Uh, I wrote paper on that. I, hundreds of people use that paperwork. Within two years, that rule was changed. They they made it 30 days. So then everybody, who, all the cops that were going dating them for 30 or 28 days, it was, or 20 days or 28 days, they they were fine. So they took the habit of the system and they just made a law around it. it took two years. I couldn't use that documentation. Then six months later, I noticed the cops were writing them for 32 days. I said, let that paperwork goes back in again. We can stop it. And then what was interesting is then the court stopped recognizing that due process provision at all. And that told me, we're in trouble, folks. These bar associations, they go so far, and then they just violate you. And that's another type of, type of problem. But getting back to the that legal definition changes, legalities, not law, not morals, just what they can get away with. Remember, the Bar Association said that. Where appropriate, we're going to impose and promote sustainable development where appropriate. And I told you that means where they get away with it. And because you're all crickets, they get away with it about every place, every place. 
So they now turn on what I told you about the pretense of pretext. They need to take away the, the objective basis for what uh, the how one gives notice of what the uh, a national security threat is. And this is the whole point of your attack. When you remove that, you removed at my notice for yourself, because it has to be private to you, my notice of what act constitutes the threat. And you don't have the right to do that. And so you move an injunction through to, Im to, dis to destroy that provision. Usually they have sever severability clauses, so you're not going to do that. But you become someone who will not who objects directly to the fact that you aren't given notice on what this what this is. It's like what's an enemy combatant? That's one of the that's one word you'd go right after. What's an enemy combatant? If they define it, look and see which whether or not that's even accurate. I've told you they've defined terrorism to allow them to be terrorists, but that comes out of Title 50. All that needs to be attacked as well. And that's under war powers. And they keep falling back underneath this necessity of, of national security. I told you, if they got there first, we were in a lot of trouble. Folks, we're in a lot of trouble. We're in a lot of trouble. And I don't hear anybody understanding this provision at all. I mean, I don't hear anybody go, unless I listen to my own tape, my own file. Which I got to say, last week I, we on the RLM site archive, I I do a highly compressed uh, file to that archive so we can store more bro more broadcasts on the hard drives, uh, on the archive hard drive. And when that cricket, that uh, Florida indie cricket sound I played was compressed, it disappeared from the uh, file, which I found fascinating. The compression ratio apparently, or the compressing of the frequency that matched or something to null out that sound on the tape. I had to refile, resend up a file, so everyone got a larger file this this last week because it, I couldn't hear the indie crickets. And that was interesting because that means you, it was like a test. You could see how technology is uh, has a weakness. Uh, you Something is going on, but you can't hear it because another technology comes in to take it out. But anyway, so moving on to this idea. I thought that was pretty fascinating. Uh, again, more time to work it out, but it did. we got, got, got it worked out. In the words of the cabinet paper from the office, in redefining the legal term of what a threat to national security is. Now, wouldn't you like to know that, folks? And they know that, and they also know that if you have that, you can identify yourself different than that, and they have to take that out because they have to continue to keep you standing on the, on the sands, at the foundation of which they destroy. Uh, in, the sound, in the words of the pa uh, cabinet paper from the office of the prime minister and cabinet, as a result of their efforts, quote, the act now avoids defining the term national security in legislation, allowing it to be adaptive to an ever-changing security environment. Ever adapted. Adaptive. That is the model of the parasitic amoeba. That's exactly what I tell you about this uh, invasion that's going on with these environmentalist types, these stakeholders, this consensus policy. The adaptive part. They look at the data, they become adaptive to what allows them to advance their outcomes. The ever-changing security environment. Their security environment is preying upon you and their ability to do so. Unaccosted, unassailed, un unstoppable. And so they don't now give you a definition of right. What's adaptive in judicial? Adaptive in judicial relative to the modernization and enhancement of judicial is reflexive so-called law. The bureaucrat now in a judicial capacity, because under the color of judicial capacity, the executive now decides based on their observation of what they want to decide. And she asks in the writing, so who gets to decide what national security is, uh, is at stake in any given case? Quote, comes right out of their own document. She writes here, quote, it must be determined by the minister responsible for the relevant intelligence and security agency and commissioner of intelligence warrants whether something is a matter of national security. Close quote. In other words, that's determined without a legal definition. And isn't that, how is that any different than what I told you? The addendum to the murder memo said that they denounced the judicial due process, they denounced the Libra Code and international law, and what I told you that man is we went to a no government, no branches of government where the executive went by the expedience of its self-determined need without objective basis. New Zealand came up to the same thing a few years later. 
I don't know what else to say to you, folks. This is global. It's understood. It's a plan. It's a global plan. I don't know how they got this going, but they did, and they did it underneath our nose. And this is a serious observation If uh, for those of you that want to take it on and start to get off of what you think you, it ought to be. This is what is, folks. I've talked to you about it for years. Someone else, independent of my view, through their own need, have found essentially the same things. And there's so much more. Uh, she goes on to write, the information sharing hubs are known as fusion centers. Now, we should uh, maybe Alex Jones should get a little bit of credit for most of you all started hearing about those through him, if you heard about them at all. And they're explained right here. This is all part of that structure coming on to us. And no one was saying anything other than being horrified or uh, if they were horrified at all or just, uh, yeah, 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 that's what's going on. Or you know, dismissing it or not moving against it, but just uh, admitting that it was there and, and how wrong it was, but doing nothing more. The information sharing hubs known as fusion centers, they act as a bridge between military, police, and corporate customers. Military, police, and corporate cu customers. Remember, when they talked about law enforcement in the United States, they didn't have a limit. It wasn't just the FBI. It wasn't just, just some, uh, some agency. No, it, the law enforcement happened to be the entirety of the United States law enforcement. Here is, con this is now defined the same way. Military, poli comma, police, and corporate customers. Well, that conjunct, that could be a conjunctive and there. There's no either or comma after police. And I know that sounds maybe semantic to you, but I read it this way. I read the possibility and probability that the corp police are the corporate customers, but they're military. And so we keep going. You can, you can infer or disregard whatever you want. It's up to you. I'm trying to point out this is the notice through this article of an independent researcher that independently came up with the same things I've been telling you for years and years. I have a different way I can prove it as well. Uh, this is not, I'm not saying any of this is valid and valid. I'm saying it's there for you to research. I'm saying this is what she took the time out to write, and I'm finding value in being able to highlight certain portions of it and explain this is what I was partly telling you when I explained this as a condition that you live under, that you may or may not understand how it's that it's working or how it's working, and you certainly then wouldn't understand, first of all, that it's addressable to address it and then maybe how to begin to address it. They fuse, these fusion centers, they fuse, F-U-S-E, fuse commercial, governmental, police, and public data sources. Analyze the material and feed relevant parts back to the interested parties. Those are the stakeholders. This is all the same system. But you notice they said government, police, and public. Government, and commercial. That's fascism, folks. I don't know what else to say. This is not a newfangled definition of it where everyone's trying to carve their little part out. This is what government utilizing corporate corporations to run a government agenda. You heard a little bit about that fact in the in the way the fiscal system is set up within the regard of looking at the Clint Richardson corporation nation. And you understand that through the CAFRs. It's all admitted on record if you just took the time to read it all. She's just pointing out it in a different way. But you see the cough, her findings were that it fuses commercial government and police with all this data. Well, fuse, folks, makes one, okay? This is, government is not different than commerce, not different than, it's not just that it's the commerce. It's not just that it's uh, for commerce. It's not just that it's within the government authority in commerce things. This is also the, the commerce of the international. So, it's again, it keeps being tied in and tied in. The Constitution actually addresses this. And it's not unlawful. And it's certainly not unlawful, if you will, in the context of a national imperative. The problem is it's been misused. And no one's really picked up on it. They don't like We don't like it, but we don't really uh, understand it. So I'm, I had a little bit of a, you know, a server, an encoder drop, folks. I'm sorry for those of you on that line. I hope it's back. I maybe tell people to re reset your uh, your browsers or whatever. Uh, just thank you for the for the quick note I saw in one line on the browser, on the in the chat. Uh, Vinny, thank you. All this data is available on the five eyes through the New Zealand's military partnership and information sharing agreements with the U.S., such as that earlier reference in the IC Watch findings. So we have now a second witness to the fact of this condition. It's a fusion. It's a fusing of these these interests. Corporation Nation already said that that would be the fact, and that's how they always they've always been working together. I'll say always. I say maybe since 1954. That was where the state started to come into the context of the uh, corporate entity that had to make records and keep books. And I can show you where, at least in one state, 
they tell you that it, the Model Business Corporation Act was instituted over the permanent laws of people, and the permanent laws of people were substituted for those that corporate policy. And a foreign invader was then domesticated to de facto look like a domestic agency. It's called the Bar Association, who then uh, threw everybody uh, out, threatened them with uh, without having protection, and said, if you want to come underneath our organized criminal syndicate for protection, you have to make an application. That's where your applications come from. But it's private. As I say, the Bar Association in, most, in some states, for sure, in their statutes, is one of the original public-private partnerships predating everything you've probably ever been told about sustainable development, UN, bio, biodiversity, all that stuff. So going on, I'm almost done here, folks, for those of you that are still hanging there with me. I hope it's been interesting enough to keep your thoughts going. I hope you would then take this and start to learn that it, to apply it because it needs to be applied somewhere. Uh, the uh, question posed to uh, to Ms. Dawson through, I guess, a article, I mean, a radio station here, as it, as it says, a radio station, uh, as she was discussing a lot of this thing, which was interesting for me, on the, not that it would be asked, but the fact is that, that it's a question to the media, or supposedly the media that you would think would be like the fourth, you know, the, the protective force, which it isn't. But at any rate, uh, the, the Wallace Chapman of a, Chapman of a, of the uh, radio station, uh, New, York, New Zealand radio station interview said, gosh, it sounds awfully conspiratorial, doesn't it? All this that she had been talking about. Uh, when, uh, but uh, she responds uh, to this in the writing, when the conspiracy is written into law and the evidence is overwhelming, it is no longer a conspiracy theory. It's a conspiracy fact. Well, this is the problem about even saying conspiracy at all. When you went to what they say is the law, well, see, that's never that's presumed to be accurate. It's not been challenged, uh, and the point isn't upon the theory of conspiracy, and it isn't even upon the fact of the conspiracy. It's the fact, but it's open tyranny, and it's done under color of gov of lawful government. And then I have to tell you and, and remind you, and you know, if you're reminding yourself, as I said that. Oh, well, what about your civil rights in the United States? It says you have the right, and the only right, to pain, punishments, pains, fees, fines, and taxes, and all this other, and, and other extortion, wrongful exactions, or wrongful extortions. This is not a conspiracy. This is just the way, this is your life, folks. This is what you've agreed to live under. And I'm saying we gotta, we expect anything different. And well, first of all, how can we expect anything different? And then we said nothing. And then we allowed to walk in the ring with a ring in our nose. And then we didn't, when we were addressed at certain points, we're called names, we don't address that. And I'm finding out when they tell you, it's like any bully, they call you a name, you punch him back in the face. Now, you do that on paper. You call them out for that, for the fraud, for the, for the def defamation. And they have to go away. They go away really quickly. Now, whether or not you get it, whether or not you're going to get the remedy for the harm that that's done, I don't know. The point is, is that you've stopped the bully in the first instance. They're not coming after you much. They're not going to be after you uh, for that. And until we step up and do it the right way, instead of looking for the tricks, I don't know what else to say about us as a people. I mean, again, as I said, uh, I believe that it was, a, I can't remember now, I think it was a Twitter. I, I wrote back, we're an abused people. We're, we're like, we're, we're like in a continuing Stockholm syndrome. The government pretends it's it's just a Munchausen mother with a Munchausen syndrome. It's protecting all of us. And we never say, wait a minute, that's a, that's a lie. And we see that, I told you, the TSA, that's the evidence. It's a non-essential. No, that's a lie, folks. It's the whole thing is a setup. And uh, getting over to this, this article was talking about, they talk about in the tags, this last one, exclusive, they spy with li their little eye, the five eye, uh, and, and France was named. I told you about getting out. Be careful. This is a military thing. They brought the military out, and we're going to next report. I want to show you. Uh, last week it came out. The French police should use live bullets on yellow vests. It was a suggestion of this guy named Luke Ferry, and that's a predictable statement. For as, uh, st as, as uh, horrific as that would sound, this is somebody who really believes this is what should happen, and made the suggestion. And it's why I've told you maybe the riots are good. Uh, not necessarily riots. The the protest out in the streets is important to get people involved, but right after that, you need to turn away from the streets, and you need to infiltrate all the system 
with how how it's been bad against you. Not just complain that it's bad, but show maybe like Susie Dawson has done in a particular way how that happens. And Susie Dawson's problem is that they she's ex like it says an exiled journalist. She doesn't live in New Zealand anymore. Uh, they actually considered her a domestic threat when she did a FOIA. What they have a FOIA there, they wouldn't. Uh, her response after she went through appeal, where the guy Norman got one that said that he, the judge, declared in court that he was not under scrutiny. The judge in the in Susie Dawson's case said that uh, the agency had done the privacy co part code part correctly in her case. So they still didn't give her an answer, but they said that the, her exceptions to being told was proper. Well, I would just take that as a yeah, you're you're being surveilled and you're being and you're being conditioned and you're become a threat. And why wouldn't you see? This is the whole point I've been telling you. When you understand it's the military consequence, it immediately talks about the Patriot Act, P A T R I O T Act, and that you are an enemy combatant. It's why you had to start showing your papers if you want to have a bank account and prove your social value to the government, because they don't like anybody. They, those parasites, cockistocracy, the psychopaths that have decided that, that they would pull that, that national security trigger because that was the safe place for those in government. And you hear that anybody that the government wants, they will protect. No different than you see the example in vaccines. These, these are methods of, these are the responses of government when you find that there's a, a harm going on. And look how long it takes people to figure it out. They're still arguing about vaccines instead of just going and doing basically what I've been saying. You, you have to attack the, the research experts for their lack of showing the fact of these other harms that are in the, in the world now. And you show that the product data sheet it does not address the fact of its imposition, its harm, its uh, amount of, of uh, the extent of its, of its intrusion against the real threat that you're after. This is the same argument for the TSA, they now, which they now admit and you can see is non-essential and can be done with by contingency plan. But France is being said last week that they, somebody suggested they want to use uh, real bullets on people just for protesting. Now, I know it's getting out of hand over there. Well, but anyway, there's a people that are being taken down. So what is, you know, in my mind, the that they, the French people, haven't gone to their Second Amendment where the government came out there with the military it's kind of a fascinating observation on my side, but from my perspective, even though I wouldn't think that that would be your first option. But you see, the government went to guns. They're suggesting it now. Um, but the, another tactic that came out, they start to go after all the leaders. I understand the uh, leader of the vests has been arrested now. And so that's just, you know that that's when it's going to happen, but what I'm suggesting is that you don't put yourself in the position to be a leader of any group, as we we proved I proved this decades ago. You you have a, a if you have a group you have a bunch of people that all agree in the same sentiment, but nobody is in any group. You just understand to show up somewhere one day, and you are there on your own. Now, what group are you with? You, there is no group. And then you have the word in your mouth. You have your perspective on on the factual law being violated that requires that you uh, need to say what you say and you have the right to say it. And the one who's the government trying to identify the leader of the band uh, to take away the conductor, there isn't one. That works really, really well. And we get hundreds of people that do that. It's pretty fascinating to watch the, the exasperation on the officials who can't understand that there's no group there. Hundreds of people showed up, and no one is in a group, and everyone has their own thing to say, all on point, all different, all about the problem that's at hand, and they can't figure out any one to stop. I, I sit here and think, I kind of, in my mind, I'm kind of chuckling how that worked. What do you mean there's no group? What do you mean there's no leader? What leader to what you ask? What, I'm just to, didn't you hear what the commissioner did about this point, or didn't you hear about this? Has got to stop. And why aren't you stop? You're the cop. Why aren't you stopping the crime? All of a sudden, now the shoe's on the other foot, isn't it? Again, you sit there in a complete innocence and complete right. You don't take on the nonsense of, that they offer you. You don't buy in. You walk. You walk non-dependently uh, amongst others of the same non-dependent uh, will. In your own responsibility. 
and yet you all full know that you're all together. And so, there's lots of ways to pull this off. I don't, uh, anyway, I'll stop. I mean, if you're not interested, I, I would suggest that I've done that. It works pretty cool. You can do it one off and this and that, but you really need to move into how the structure from the inside is being eaten away by the inside. How to identify those inside the government as the cancer that they are, whether or not they understand that. And the ones that you figure out don't understand, you gently educate them and see if they'll turn. A lot of people will turn over some time. It takes maybe a half half a year. You can apply uh, information to them. They slowly see. We've got a couple commissioners that have done it. Pretty interesting to watch the transformation, the real good one, where they actually start to become someone that starts to integrate with the, what has to happen, not the not the fairy tale of what, what could happen, but the thing that they're obligated to, to have to impose, uh, I say impose, to, to actually do. It's really a, it's, it's really the thing within the police power that they're looking to protect in case, if there is a real problem. And as one, commission, one county did, when the nonsense of climate change came up, the commissioner said, that's beyond anything we do at the county. We're not involved in climate change and can do nothing about that. And so they just, they didn't even entertain it at that point. And the people who were there uh, to try and impose that upon a production uh, discussion walked out. The meeting was free of that of that taint. That's how fast and how easy this starts to work, folks. And it works in not just that context, in all kinds of contexts. So this police state sits there. The military consequence, the military police were over there in France. They're not saying they want to shoot people. This is all part of what I've been saying about the military consequence. It's global. The Susie Dawson article shows you it goes all over, folks. It's all over. It's global. And she's just seeing it now as it affected her and started to get her to, to do the research in New Zealand. And yet for us in the United States, I would uh, say, and I, and I think I've shown pretty clearly, we've been underneath this problem in, a, in ver various degrees and the most now since Lincoln's time. But the military comes out nonetheless. The military is, is a pervasive thing that no one really wants to look at. Uh, they want to take these partners in contract, these suppliers of weapons, and they want to try to legitimize them in front of everybody. And those those private contractors are somewhat protected. Uh, they still have to do their own their own uh, try to do their own tests. And you'll see uh, the extension of this military weaponization goes right into your into your hospitals. In this story, Axon partners with a public hospital to rebrand stun guns as life saving devices. If you can't you don't quite get it how this works. And you see all the same terminology: the public private partnership trying to get some license, some acquiescence to show that what their their death machines are are okay. Last month, an article in the Star Tribune revealed a disturbing partnership between Axon Enterprises Incorporated, the maker of the Taser, and a public hospital. For 14 years, Axon has been paying the Hennepin County Medical Center more than 1.1 million dollars to help convince juries and the public that the that the uh, tasers are life-saving devices. Axon has been paying two doctors between 20000 and 36000 a year to write hundreds of Axon-funded stories and serve as Axon medical advisors. I don't need to go on. Isn't that what Mon Satan does? Isn't that what any of these big corporations do? Isn't this the problem now with these, uh, these so-called scientists? They're all political things. This is the world. They're talking about a partnership, public-private fascism. Their method of imposition is through someone who comes under the cover of authority. And we see that as we, the 1985 document written by the guru for the implementation of this method, he says, let's say something like a biologist in that system is actually a, a political lobbyist. In other words, they go in to prove the outcome they need for the other thing they're doing. And that is what they call best science. It's the thing you gave. In other words, as I keep telling you, you gave a republic. Well, they're giving you this. I purposely misspeak that. I want to catch your attention. They gave you a bunch of stuff. Are you going to accept it? Are you going to buy it? Are you what? What are you going to do with the stuff you gave? It's time that we really start tossing it down. We don't ex TSA, I'm tossing it down. Don't agree. You just found, you just proven that it's non-essential. 
The fact that uh, you are saying that you need the personal identifiers, you don't need that. The fact that you uh, have to surveil me, you don't need that. Why? Because you have violated and defamed me without cause as to what the, uh, the status I am and the imperative that you claim is. In other words, you're claiming national security, and because of that, I'm now having to be presumed to be some enemy combatant. And then you're doing it on people that you ought not be doing it to, and then you, that you lied on all of that to get everybody involved is just building up the pyre for the for your fire, uh, the, the logs on your pyre and funeral, if we were to step up and do that. Again, companies that keep bringing it along, governments that keep using private company things is uh, just to, to impose upon you is a, is a fascism. It's a simple definition. I don't know why it gets all convoluted. I think it gets convoluted so that people don't understand how simple this is to see because it, as soon as you see it, it exposes all the public-private partnerships, including the Bar Association that has taken over the agencies and the departments of most of your governments. That's a public-private partnership. Only that one's even more secretly than this. But at any rate, uh, government will do all kinds of stuff. Take these police, uh, these uh, the police, the military will take all kinds of tools and weapons. We heard that on the other article. 200K on facial recognition and zero arrests. UK police slam for wasting public money. Well, finally, what have I said about this very same thing? Why are we? Why aren't we stepping up and saying you can't do it this way? This is not something you have the right to do. All the companies are coming up with facial recognition, notwithstanding we know they're they can be up to 95% in error. I think this article points all this stuff out. So people are saying this is wasting money. What have I talked about before? Is the misappropriation of public funds to do these things. Now you tie that to this pretense and the non-essentialness of it, and now you're starting building, your, building yourself a case, a solid argument more than, oh, we just shouldn't be surveilled. You start to actually put together how to dismantle this thing that's grown up around us. And despite all this base, this, base, this biometrics, uh, we find a. And I'll just jump here, and then I got to go. I'll be jumping back out of here. But we find, despite all this facial recognition and this biometrics, if you have it on your phone, we have a report. The cops can't use this, uh, as determined by a one district federal district court judge in the United States of America. Cops can't force people to unlock their phones with biometrics. Now, the thing I thought I, I found interesting with this is the court, the way the court ruled, and I and I think it's pretty fair ruling, notwithstanding my my problem with USDC courts, as I've explained all their incompetence, but from, a, from an establishment standpoint, the not their knowledge, but the establishment of lawful jurisdiction, and over what, uh, the discussion here uh, by the judge was kind of interested. Uh, the, if a person cannot be compelled to provide a passcode because it's it is testimonial communication. Now here's a legal term, right? Testimonial communication. So they have to find it within this, that your biometrics is within this definition. Uh, she says, as Judge Candace Westmore says, a person cannot be compelled to provide one's finger, thumb, iris, face, or other biometric feature to unlock that same device. And then my question on all this, and I won't talk about this much more, was, was how is it not a facial proof that your face or any biometric is self-incrimination. Where did it come that ev your face and your and your fingerprint couldn't be other than a self-incrimination if it went to do anything? That this was ever even a question. How is your face not a self-incrimination? One judge says that that is. So we'll see how this far, how far this goes. But you see what happens to the military state. They get the day. They get the point first. Now you got to clamor and fight to get some one of them to say so that, that it was no good. That's not an antecedent, right? That's not a right being reflected in the first case. As I roll eyes, you get your right to to bear arms 18 years after. You know, a, a, a wrongful act to take it was was enacted. That's not that. Stop and listen. Look at that world. What kind of a world is that that takes away your rights, presumed re removal of your rights, and you have to go 18 years before you get the right answer, and then you hope it's the right answer? Cannot be the best we could be doing, and cannot be a system that we agree to. Oh, you know, given I'm talking, given you have some sort of presumption of innocence built into you.
which I have a funny feeling that maybe we really don't. No, I've had to develop mine back, and I think I know because of I had to develop back, I think most of you all may not have quite that uh, quite that appreciation for what a presumption of innocence absolutely is. It allows me to cut through a whole lot of stuff. If I'm innocent, you, there's nothing you can put on me. And it burdens on you to put on whatever you thought you could. But then again, you're in violation for attempting it without the right. And a, and a presumption of innocence is pretty powerful more than you might think, and I think more than most people think or appreciate. It allows me to look at jurisdictional issues very easily and quickly. And I get to make those assertions that I think beyond what I've ever seen anybody else do. Not to put myself in any exalted place, what I'm saying is the lack of appreciation of what the presumption of innocence to an encroachment is, is not fully appreciated by the bulk of society. And how could you if you're all really sitting as a bunch of abused children? No, we lash out and we tantrum and we do all this stuff, but we don't, we don't really settle down with the, um, the responsibility that comes with being the man or the woman as opposed to a person. Where the person has been a fraudulent assertion on you. Because remember, a man with a civil obligation or a woman with a civil obligation is a person. And if the person is defined specifically within the statute of your uh, voluntarily applied subject matter. And so it's pretty simple to see there. And if I haven't done any of that, there's a, a crime going on to someone that wants to assert the contrary. So we go on and go on. This military surveillance thing is all you heard. It was in the last article. It's federal. It's, it's, it's all across the United States. The United States is the leader. It even ties into your Federal Reserve. That should give you a big clue about this fiat stuff. Uh, not not a sole clue, but still, you get a sense of the comprehensiveness of all this. But here we have a report. The feds are spying on rest areas, creating a multi-state bathroom surveillance program. I mean, really, do I need to read more than the, the titles? This is just nonsense. But you look at the Department of Transportation, you realize they put on sustainable development. They're part of the smart thing, uh, the moving forward, all this uh, liberalism, the pro progressivism. They're part of this grant stream funding. They're part of the problem. They're a venue of a, a, a veneer above your rights that encroaches on your rights. They're in commerce as well, so it does it's supposed to pertain to the, the truckers in commerce. But those of you who travel on the highway, the DOT and police are now spying on rest areas in real time, 24/7. Well, I'm, I think that they're, they're doing a whole lot more than. But here they're telling you. We can go on and on and read the story, but just think about. This pervasive surveillance encroachment. And I want to remind you, we just found out that TSA is not essential. That means that their purpose is a pretense or pretext for whatever crime they're doing. This is an extension of that. Your DOTs are an extension of that. Whether it's federal at Title 49 or has gone and implemented through the states under their uh, D Department of Transportation. No different, I tell you, that a, the Clean Water Act is implemented in every state. The Federal Clean Water Act is implemented by every DEQ in every state. And what do I tell you about DEQ? That goes back to the Environmental Quality uh, Agency Commission, and that is going to impose the third, one of the pillars of sustainable development. I read all the documents to you. Using the same method of destruction as I just read in parts out of uh, Susie Dawson's article that she found independently in New Zealand, folks. I don't, you know, I just wonder why are we having so much trouble getting what I'm saying or actually embracing enough to understand we do have something to do. And why isn't that happening? And I can only come up that we're not capable. We missed it. We're we're dysfunctional at minimum. We're dysfunctional. And we will bring up about every excuse to maintain that dysfunctionality, despite what we know. And I can't say I like it, but uh, this, uh, it's something like not what I want to do. It's what I have to do, I think, is where it kind of boils down for me. So, in this militarization, I, when I talked about the Federal Reserve that goes to the IMF. We talked about the World Bank. We talked about then they handed the authority over to China. I told you that to make the global policies because they seem to be like the pioneering police state on a global level because they've got a big enough population relative to the global that if their programs work, it's easily scaled to the globe. 
And they were handed the thing. I've told you when it happened. I told you the uh, it was the IMF is a part of the BRICS, and they were part of that. And this was all coming down. And I talked about watch the blockchain and all this. And I told you watch your blockchain; it'll change. And watch that they're going to start to take control of it. Well, here's your first evidence for those of you that believe that it's decentralized or decentralizable and maintainable outside. For those uh, that want to be regulated or even popular, and this becomes that problem. China wants to censor the blockchain now. Another story right here for us. Uh, after Chinese citizens bypass censorship by storing documents on Ethereum's blockchain, China's government has passed regulations that require the blockchain to be censorable. Quote, China, Chinese blockchain platforms will have to censor, con has to censor content, allow authorities access to stored data, and check the identity of users under rules set out on Thursday by Beijing. This is, uh, we used to look at Britain uh, for the, what's coming down the pike. Now we look to China. The pivot was to China. Folks, Obama told us that. And here it is, and this is what it was about. And this is just another part of the global network, the militarized network, the net it, that's on you. And here, I don't know what more to say. I said it right up in the title. I said it in the first statement. I told you, be careful. The blockchains are going to be allowed. That don't be possessed by a control structure in a government somewhere. And if I said easily, uh, Vince, I'm sorry. I'm, I, I apologize. Didn't mean to disrespect you. Uh, more than, uh, okay, so China's going to, this is what I was telling you about the blockchains. They're going to be centralized by the authority of regulation, and the other ones will be outlawed. And yeah, you can use them, but that'll be like anybody that's ever done the black market stuff and all that kind of thing. But this is digitally connected in a world that you have no idea about, literally no idea. And it's so full of, it's Swiss cheese relative to security. There's holes all over the place. And I told you some of the hardware holes just can't be patched. And those have been understood, so I, I don't know what more to say. I don't know what, what you think you're walking into without responding to some, some of it. It's pretty, uh, I don't know, I get kind of disappointed, a lot disappointed. And I don't know what more to think about, so I stop thinking about it and say, okay, I, gotta, I got other jobs to do. I got other things to pull off and do to get fixed where I'm at. And that's really how I just kind of resolve all of this, notwithstanding all the nonsense that's happened since, again, the first of the year. This, Really stupid stuff. Not that you can't handle it, but you're going to handle a bunch of nonsense. Uh, now, so now they make all this censorable, so, uh, censorable stuff. It's our access. Remember, that's just the access. The blockchain's involved. I told you whoever runs the blockchain or can control it is going to be your master chain. Yeah? All of this is written down. This is now understood to be a global thing. IMF is involved. Federal Reserve is involved. China's involved in making the policies. They're now implementing those policies on their population. I don't know what more to say. It's all integrated. Uh, what, why aren't we? Why are we embracing the nonsense around embracing this stuff and distracted by it? I don't know. But and then we find out that again, and it's going to be an ongoing theme. More than 25 million passport numbers stolen at the Marriott breach. The Marriott has some good news and some bad news about the historic hack and suffered in November. If you can tell now how far back I'm reporting some of these tabs. I'm trying to get through some today. Didn't get it through as much as I was going to hope I could, as usual. I've got so much information now that's being, I need to say that, uh, finally months later, people are now reporting on it, but it was, it was news months ago. Uh, but anyway, Mary, on this story for today, where I am a man today, how far I could get, the company originally estimated 500 million people were affected by an investigation conducted by digital forensic team, slimmed down now to 383 million customers. Uh, hackers stole a lot of data, including names, phone numbers, email addresses, and credit card numbers. They stole 5.25 million in unencrypted pass, passport numbers and 20.3 million encrypted passport numbers. The company announced it would pay for passport replacements. So there we're talking about the integration now with how you travel, with your documentation, how you'll do that by a hacker, because the system is Swiss cheese. Folks. It's uh, little rats out there just love this stuff. And this is what happens when you have what they call censorable, uh, hackable. There's nothing more evidence that uh, this is the world. The, the brave new world isn't going to be so brave, but it is going to be pretty fear, fearsome. If you buy in, continue to buy into it, continue to allow the global network of militarization, it's all there because of this. Think about that. If you removed all that uh, that pretense, we wouldn't have to be, the companies wouldn't be pressed to become fascists. Because their whole goal is to make that profit. We know that now by the new 
the new, like I said, since 53, 54, they now went to the Model Business Corporation Act. This is all what it's all all down to, commerce. And we were told that in the Constitution. So those of you that are constitutionalists, to take that to a very high degree of a, of a millstone. Because they're, they're, these people now have figured out how to work this uh, really, really well. How really, really, we don't understand it. Researchers uh, fear, I'm moving on and changing a little bit over here, uh, what, what sickens us and what makes us, gets us uh, troubles and frets and rows, moves on into what also can sicken, sicken us. And these researchers uh, fear wider spread of mysterious polio-like back virus in 2020. They're predicting the future for you here, folks. Uh, this military uh, consequence and network and global surveillance control regulation imposition on the preying upon you is is all told to us if we just read the notice as uh, the news as the notice that it is again this is a uh, months ago uh, but this is I also talked about this a bit and I said uh, they didn't understand what it was causing it they could not the CDC could not put together the consequences of the uh, the causation of this after a record setting 186 cases of the polio like disease acute flaccid myelitis in two, in 2018 the peak has passed and instances of its uh, expected uh, uh, you know, inst instances of it are expected to continue to decline until 2020. They're expected by the experts, folks. They didn't know what was this. They didn't want to focus on the fact that they were causing this by, again, just not reading the product insert very clearly uh, on the uh, on the product. And then you hear all the other fi failings relative to what this these vaccines do and the experts can't come together to figure out why they just know it's on the de on the decline i'm pausing here to you know i didn't i didn't bring i wonder how it goes in through your mind i talked about the federal reserve do you think that doesn't touch treasury i didn't say the treasury because it doesn't exist treasury exists there's no the on this thing do you think that that doesn't touch Treasury? Does these pharmaceutical vaccine harm courts touch the Treasury? No, I said the Treasury then. That's the budget. Treasury runs the commerce of the world. Federal Reserve is looking at that. Do you think anything that touches that that account is within the control and the, and the constraint of the government to do something about? If you said yes, then you're well, you take a step back a bit, let someone else come forward, they're not paying attention. This is a condition where they're predicting the future, they claim to have it on a decline. I don't know whether it's going to go one way or the other. I understand this was said underneath when they said they didn't even know. So how are they doing this prediction? But this is the control grid that goes on, and they meet people's expectations, they lead their people's minds because we're all programmed. We're going to see people be hurt by a polio-like disease as if now they want you to disregard it. Your little one could get this. And this polio-like disease is actually, from what I understand, a degraded polio. And this is the best that the government can do? Well, when you understand that the praying that they're doing upon you at the government level on the Susie Dawson article extends over to this, that's what this government is doing. You say, well, how can people do that? Well, I don't know. Go read Title 50. Folks. You tell me why all the exceptions are there for them to do this. Why are the exceptions there? You answer that for me first. I don't have an answer to insanity. I told I said, don't argue with insanity. You better find out where the thing came off the rail and show how to fix it. And that exposes the one who's insane. That's the only thing I can do. And how I do that in the, in the property land laws to go right to the objective basis and we stay right there. And I've told you up last week or the week before, make you better make even a narrow line on that narrow path because there, what's coming on is just too bizarre. And so the, on one hand, you have the authorized vaccines giving polio-like viruses, which they don't want to admit. They don't even understand. They claim they don't understand it. And I told you week, months ago there was enough evidence to say that. What do you mean they can't come up with some plausible cause to look at? But the evidence is there. They're just not wanting to look at it. But people will believe them. And we get this this report now. Uh, the and this was kind of an interesting thing that happened relative to 
the the accident that was happened by Prince Philip, who's 97 years old, but right after the accident, and this little theory that fun to me that's a fun theory. Who knows? Might be the truth. And there is some truth to the underlying concept a bit, uh, although that hasn't been proven out. But when he got uh, affected in 97, he, he had an accident in his Land Rover. Uh, what what was res- what people were responding to was that the baby blood he gets as a transfusion is uh, it, it must have been strong that he could be 97 and uh, vitalizing him to the point that he's 97 driving around until he does have an accident. Uh, it was interesting in that same day or week or days or within that days, this story came up about uh, transfusing people with uh, heart, with with young blood. And it says, a strange new startup harvests young blood to sell to the rich at $8,000 $8, a liter. Now, there's been lots of ideas about this, and there's lots of uh, Luciferian and satanic ideas about this happening. There is some reports that this actually does, well, we heard some reports of stem cells that actually revitalize your own body from people. The problem is, it is from different other people. Uh, transfusions are not a simple business. And in fact, the people that are in it already will tell you that. These people that do transfusions, it's not so simple. And yet somebody who, if you read the story, doesn't really have any medical training at all, is offering as a company now. Florida-based company is attempting to combat the aging process by harvesting the blood of young people and transfusing it into patients 30 years old and above in a dubious new fad sweeping the United States. Well, it may not be so dubious, and there's a, a bunch of reasons why you don't do this. Uh, and uh, the reason why it is happening is, uh, as I said, I mentioned uh, we can go on to the next step in dimension down and into where this, uh, why would we live in a military world, in a world of war, unless that's the mentality and the spirit in the world, and that's the spirit we're talking about that starts to bring this on and promotes it, uh, and uh, there may be some efficacy to some of this, but when you look at the story, this is uh, like vampirism being translated over as well, and uh, this is, they want to talk about the some people can pay for this, and it's going to be the haves and the have-nots if you want to buy into this one as well. The problem I saw with this is that when you read this story, you only get the blood of the people that are a certain age, uh, like 12 to 16 or something. Uh, I think, if, if given any any truth to the observation that was made on Twitter about Prince Philip, uh, he gets the real young ones. He gets the blood transfusion from the baby which we've heard is going on in different circles. If you do some research, you'll find that that goes on. I can't even think about it. Despicable, but that's out there. And we start finding out that there's lots and lots of uh, children disappearing every year. And uh, I know my studies, uh, like I did in around 2000 on my child services problem and the disappearance of children under r- the term runaway, uh, this does not, this fits into a into a, another probability, a possibility of what's going on. But now it's being openly sold uh, blood. Uh, you get a big discount if you want to get two liters. Uh, and uh, they're trying to tell you that if you take someone else's blood, a younger blood, you'll have the, the 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 ingredients to make you feel more youthful and uh, maybe even not grow old, like someone suggested uh, Prince Philip can do. Because how else can you? How else? What else answers the fact that he's 97 and drives fast enough to cause an accident? I, I don't know, but. Uh, anyway, I found it interesting the coincidence of those those that thought and that's and that story uh, coming up to do something that if you do the research behind the transfusion, is really not something that should be a fad. It's really not something you want to play around with. And I mean, I, you can go on more and more about what that might be doing and what they would be doing, and how that leads into other technologies. And the getting you to do the transfusions, which will do other things in the future. But I won't, again, that's up to those of you that want to go there. I, I'm more interested in, look at the future, look at what's coming down now, look where they want you to go, how does that tie into the structure, the global network of control, and uh, how how is that moving the societies into places that they'll be more susceptible to being preyed upon, I guess is the main thing I see. Uh, because you won't stand up, uh, you have your ideas and your fantasies about well, how things should be, and that's the extent of what goes on. Moving, continuing... Uh, on to then the failure of these things that happen. Big Pharma's worst nightmare, survey finds most medical pot users quitting prescription drug use. So I'm just going to go through a quick bunch of uh, things here. See, Pharma don't have it right, but that's what's given license to do the things it does, and that's actually leading you down the primrose path to to, oh, to hell, I'll say, to Hades. 
It leads you down the primrose path to things you shouldn't be doing. And it preys upon your childlike nature. And uh, you're old, getting old and you'd like to keep that childlike nature. So you're going to go uh, be vampires to other people younger than you. All right. So, but, but Big Pharma uh, is, uh, that by this article, is saying that the survey uh, is proving that the Big Pharma's worst nightmare that me product you Medical pot users are quitting for prescription, prescription, prescription drug use. Excuse me. What is my point to read that at all? Let me read another thing here. For those of you that are doing any commenting on the on the on your cannabis legalization or, or non legalization, the the de, 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 de scheduling of it, I found a whole bunch of interesting little sites that you may want to use. Here's the first survey that you can bring forward. It's not forget the worst nightmare. It's that people are using pot on their own to avert using prescription drugs. That's an interesting point to address that you would have more proof now, not your opinion. Now, I ran across this little site called CB Diva. Interesting Twitter site. I'll give you the link in the podcaster. You go through this website, there's all kinds of information of studies and facts and things that have gone on that you can collect for those of you that want to do it that show how the scheduling of that uh, of a plant is completely misguided, unscientific, untested, actually. The tests are wrong. You do all this, you can bring all this up. You can make addendums, I think, to your filings as well. This is new evidence. And in a court of law, you have new evidence, can actually start a new trial. So you bring that in. And you put that on the record. Uh, but to, so see, you might want to check out CB Diva. I, I'm only interested to look at this in this in the way that it helps those of you to do what you may have intended in trying to stop, uh, get deschedulize this this plant and then move it away and get it out of even legalization because once it's out then you don't even have to legalize it and now we got rid of the civil problem as well. A uh, study shows weed may be better treated to, uh, for ADHD than Adderall or Ritalin. I could read all these, but I'm running out of time. Uh, the, the, the World uh, Health Organ, WHO, yeah, the WHO, not the WHO, not the rock, not the rock group, but not the not the owl, but the World Health Organization that uh, is so terrible actually has a, a plan, uh, a report that they have on page 18 has a whole list of effects they're finding on an international scale. For those of you addressing that international. Uh, the DEA or the uh, FC, FAA, no, that would be, uh, who is that? FDA, excuse me, uh, that little comment period, or other ones. These are a bunch of anything you want to do with the cannabis that says that the administrative impositions are improper, and I would say turn that back to a production right. Uh, first of its, uh, okay, now I'm going to move on, and I don't have time for that, so but there, so I have a list of things in the broadcaster that show not just your opinion and not just a con, just an idea. If those of you that that want to get your property rights back, and this is what I look at, and your production rights, and stop uh, proving out that the non-essential regulation of non-essential things and non-essential to the system can be dealt with, and give yourself the exercise and the proof to do so. The 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 the, the uh, exam the the excuse me, experience to do that it's it's in the it's in these things like for me I wouldn't even I don't even care about it but I can see a path if I was to be make it interest I had nothing else to do I could use all of this to then really assert something against these people that are in positions of power that are actually enforcing pharma upon you that we see people are taking their own voluntary decisions to move away from when there is the alternative. Talk about alternatives and consensus. This is how the type of alternative you start to bring. So thank you for listening today. I hope something I said gives you an insight, uh, ties together the world in a way that makes you see it more realistically, and then that gives you the, visit, the, the foundation to proceed more properly and hopefully much more safely than what I've seen lots of people want, want to do in face of the, uh, the psychopaths that you might be against. Up against. Thank you, Grimner, for what you do at reallibertymedia.com and uh, all the work you do for the website and keeping us going. And uh, all those that share and like and uh, forward and recast and reproduce the broadcast, thank you very much for passing the word out. I do, do appreciate all that. And I uh, should be, I'll be with you next week. Tech diffs or nature will. Well, that's another lesson. 
I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, Journey with Purpose. A can of whoop ass feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop ass.